Welcome back to another Space Gas video. In today's video, we will look at how to model slabs in a multi-storied building using plate elements in Space Gas. Plate elements can be used to model features such as walls, slabs, plates, tanks, retaining structures, etc. Using the Structure Wizard, a simple two-storied model has been previously generated for this video. At this stage, it contains only beams and columns. We can add slabs by clicking the Draw Plates button on the top toolbar. Note that you can switch between drawing members, triangular plates and quadrilateral plates at any time while in the drawing mode by just pressing the MT or Q keys on your keyboard. Let's start by selecting quadrilateral plates and then drawing the first floor slabs, attaching them to the nodes that already exist there. We need to specify an initial default plate thickness. Of course, this can be changed for any of the plates later. To disconnect from the plate just drawn, we can press the keyboard escape key or click the right mouse button and then continue drawing at a different location. To exit the drawing mode, we can press the escape key or click the right mouse button twice. Next, we will copy the first floor slabs up to the second floor by selecting them, clicking the right mouse button, choosing the copy tool, a long line, selecting the number of copies and selecting the ends of a vector that represents the vertical distance from the first floor to the second. Being finite elements, we now need to mesh the plates so that an accurate solution can be obtained. We can do this by selecting them, right clicking and then selecting the mesh tool. In this case, we will mesh the plates down to a 1 meter element size. Generally speaking, the finer the mesh, the more accurate the solution. You need to consider the trade-off between the fineness of the mesh and the size of the model and its corresponding analysis time. The beams around the perimeter of the floor slabs must be properly connected to the slabs at the intermediate mesh points and we must therefore ensure that the split members option at the bottom is ticked. This will subdivide the beams to match the plate meshing and the intermediate nodes will be shared by the plates and the beams. Without this, there would be no connection between the beams and the slabs along the slab sides. Looking at the model in the renderer and showing the plate edges, you can see how the plates are meshed. By activating the gaps at nodes, you can see how the beams have been subdivided to match the plate meshing. You can also see that the vertical alignment of the slabs and beams is such that they are all centered at the node level. The alignment can be seen more clearly if we make the members transparent. The transparency of the members and the plates can be adjusted by clicking the Transparency setting on the side toolbar. We could also offset the beams and slabs so that their top surfaces are at the node level. Starting with the longitudinal beams, an easy way to select them is to use the Find tool and specify the section property number that they share. Once selected, we can open the properties form and apply the required offset. Next, we will repeat the process for the smaller transverse beams. Finally, we will offset the slabs downwards by half their thickness. When you take another look at the renderer, you can see that the model is now aligned such that the top of the slab sits level with the top of the beams. It is important to note that using offsets affects your results, as offsets are equivalent to rigid elements that connect the ends of a member plate to its nodes, and these rigid elements can change the forces and moments in the member plate. In the next video, we will apply some loads, analyse the model, and then look at the results that are produced. 